So now that we've looked at how the tree of life is somewhat organized through these branching mechanisms called cladograms, let's go ahead and look at some classification which is often called the science of taxonomy. Now scientists love to classify and biologists are on the top of that list of who loves to classify. And why do we classify? We classify to understand the diversity of life we look at the system of bi biological classification as a way of naming and ordering living things in a logical manner so that we understand how everything is interrelated. Now the science of taxonomy goes back to a search for a naming system and the reason is when we talk about things we want to make sure that everybody's talking about the same thing in the same way. If I'm talking about a tiger and I'm speaking to another scientist around the world who speaks a different language, I need to understand that that scientist is also understanding what a tiger is. So if I say potato, some other scientist may say Solanum tuberosum, which is just Latin for potato. Now, this science of naming or classification through names was brought about by a Swedish botanist named Carolus Linnaeus and he developed a system of naming that would make it easier to communicate about the same organism so that we weren't using different names and would break down any la uh, language barriers so what he did is he built his naming system around the language of Latin which at that time was universal for all scientists so most things are still named in their Latin roots. Now Linnaeus came up with a system which we now call binomial nomenclature and we know binomial from algebra means two, two parts so nomenclature is naming so this is a two-part naming and we use actually the genus and the species of the animal or the organism or the plant or the fungus, whatever it may be, we use its genus and its species to give it its scientific name or its binomial name. The genus is always going to be capitalized and the species will always be lowercase. So Ursus horribilis is the grizzly bear and Felis leo is a lion. Lumbricus terrestris is an earthworm. Acerubrum is a red maple tree. And we, mankind, are Homo sapien. But in each case, notice that the genus is capitalized and the species name is lowercase. So our genus is Homo and our species is sapien. The lion has a genus of Felis and the species is Leo. Now as I said before in this binomial nomenclature the genus is always going to be capitalized the species is never capitalized and we always write this name italicized and if we can't italicize it we underline it. So if I'm talking about the lion I do Felis Leo notice that the words are italicized but if I can't italicize Felis domesticus, which is the house cat, notice I underline it. Acerubrum, again, italicized, that is the red maple. And Homo sapien, if I cannot italicize it, I underline it. And Homo sapien is wise man. Now this science of organization or classification is called taxonomy and it is named taxonomy because the levels of organization are called taxon a taxa is the plural and they are basically the levels of division of the organisms and the common characteristics they share so when you did the cladograms you were organizing those organisms based on sharing certain traits well that's the same thing that's happening here and those levels of organization are called a taxon or there are actually eight levels so there are eight taxa. Now notice the final two taxa 
genus, and species are actually that binomial name. And we'll look at the, how that works out in just a second. So the taxa, again, that's plural for taxon, are the domain, the kingdom, the phylum, the class, order, family, genus, and species. Again, the genus and species, notice I italicized them here because that's to remind you that those are the binomial names. Now, for this red fox, it belongs to the domain eukarya. And we know that eukaryotes are those cells that have an organized nucleus because it has a nuclear membrane surrounding the genetic material and nuclear material of the cell. So this is the domain eukarya. A red fox belongs to the kingdom Animalia. It's in the animal kingdom. Because it has a spinal cord, because it has a long spine of bones, vertebrae, this is a chordata. That chordata is its phylum. It has fur and they nurse their young, so this belongs to the class Mammalia. It is a meat-eating organism, so it is a order carnivora. The family belongs to the dog family, which is the canine family, so the family is Canidae. And its genus is Vulpes, and its species is also Vulpes, but its genus and species are Vulpes Vulpes. So the red fox in its binomial name would be Vulpes Vulpes. So in order to remember the order of the taxa, uh, we use the mnemonic that dapper kings play chess on fine green squares. Dapper, D for domain, kings, K for kingdom, play, P for phylum, chess, C for class, on, O for order, fine, F for family, green for genus, the G, and squares, S gives us species. So to remember the order of the taxa in taxonomy, we are looking at dapper kings playing chess on fine green squares to remember domain, kingdom, phylum, chess, class, order, family, genus, and species. Now remember, this taxonomy, this classification system can be used for any living organism from the smallest bacteria to the largest blue whale. All organisms using this taxonomic process of classification can be named based on these taxa. Now I'm going to go through a couple animal species and look at how we would use this taxonomy to organize how these are classified. And I'll begin with the brown bear. Again, an Brown bear we know is an animal, animal kingdom. It has a spinal cord, so chordata for its phylum. It has fur and nurses its young, so that makes it a mammalia for its class. Order, carnivora, because it is a meat-eating organism. The bear family are ursidae. Its genus is ursus, and its species is horriblis. To give you another example, let's look at the gorilla. Again, the gorilla is an animal, has a spinal cord, chordata. It belongs to the class Mammalia. Its order is primate, family, Pongidae. Its genus and species are the same, gorilla, gorilla. Notice that the genus is capitalized and the species is not. Moving on to humans, we are animals, we are chordates with our vertebrae, our spinal column, we are mammals because we nurse our young, we are primates because we belong to the same order as the gorilla, but we are of a different family, we are of the family hominidae, 
and we are genus homo, man, and sapien means wise, so wise man. The human is animalia, chordata, mammalia, primates, hominidae, homo sapien. Now, we are in our current classification system of taxonomy, we have three domains. Two domains are prokaryotic, and we recall from our previous studies that prokaryotic means that those cells do not have an organized nucleus. And there are two basic branches or domains of these prokaryotes. There's pure bacteria, and there's archaea, which is another form of bacteria known as ancient bacteria, typically living in very harsh environments, thermophiles living in thermal vents of volcanoes or the ocean depths. We also have the domain eukaryota, which are all organisms that have cells with an organized nucleus. So this would be everything from protists to animals, plants, and fungi. Now in our taxonomic system, our system are broken down into six kingdoms. Archaebacteria and eubacteria, which are somehow are sometimes lumped in a super kingdom called Monera. Other single organism, single celled organisms include protists. Then we get to multicellular organisms like fungi, plants, and animals. And these are the six basic kingdoms of our taxonomic system. So as I said, the bacteria are broken down into archaebacteria and eubacteria. They are sometimes grouped in a super kingdom called Monera. Archaebacteria are unicellular. They are prokaryotic, no organized nucleus. They typically do not have cell walls and they are RNA based. The other part of the super kingdom Monera are the eubacteria which are also unicellular, prokaryotic. They do have cell walls and will often live in colonies or in long filaments. The protist kingdom are also single-celled, unicellular. There are animal-like protists, which are eukaryotic, having an organized nucleus, heterotrophic, which means they have to go out and get their food, and they are motile, which means they are able to move. We also have the kingdom Protista, which are plant-like protists, unicellular, eukaryotic, autotrophic because they can make their own food, typically being photosynthetic, but sometimes being chemotrophic, able to make their food from chemicals in their environment. We then have the kingdom Protista, which includes slime molds and fungi-like organisms. They can be unicellular or multicellular. They are eukaryotic, and typically they are detritivores or decomposers. Kingdom fungi are eukaryotic, which means they have an organized nucleus. They can be unicellular or multicellular. They always have cell walls. They are autotrophic, typically decomposers. Their reproduction includes asexual, sexual, and often in a routine called alternation of generations. The plant kingdom are all eukaryotic, multicellular, autotrophic, being photosynthetic because they contain chlorophylls, and all of them have cell walls. And the final kingdom, of course, is the kingdom Animalia, which are eukaryotic, multicellular, heterotrophs, which could be herbivores eating plants, carnivores eating meat, or omnivores eating anything that's available, including no cell walls, and complex and highly organized in their development.